engine one of the first components that you've got to remove is the inlet manifold and this is held in place by 13 millimeter nuts holding it to the cylinder head as well i've got to make sure that i disconnect the map sensor and the inlet air temperature sensor because i don't want to be damaging the wiring loom with the inlet manifold removed it gives better access to the fuel pump plug and as you can see in the picture there's two wires pushed into pins two and three this is where the wires that will lead up to the the potentiometer and the boost switch uh, are fitted make sure that you've got the plug facing in the right direction when you refit it it will only go on in one way once you've reattached the plug you need to route the cable up to the boost switch in a place where it's not going to get damaged by any moving parts. I use cable ties to clip it to the pipe that actuates the boost switch. I also wrap some spiral shrouding around the wires just to give it extra protection. I fitted a spade terminal to the wire that came from pin 2 on the fuel pump plug and this fitted to one side of the boost switch. Next. I made a link wire that came from the spare terminal on the boost switch to the top peg on the potentiometer. The wire from pin 3 on the fuel pump harness went to the middle peg on the potentiometer. I would advise to fasten the potentiometer onto something non-conductive like plastic rather than a metal bracket like I've done as you will find out further on in the video uh, I made a bit of a balls up and managed to ground out the wires from the fuel pump it caused a bit of panic to say the least At this point you can see that the engine runs roughly when I bridge the terminals on the boost switch to simulate it being turned on. This is like having a normal setup with, with the every mod. As you can see the idle is really poor.
Hey, look, Bert, you've liked my video so far. I'm going to show you how I adjusted it, then, because it, it went a little bit fiddly, because I've, I've not uh, I've not got anybody to reference off. Uh, it went a little bit like uncharted uh, waters. So basically, uh, I've set it so that when it just starts to move, this switch turns on. Uh, there's a little screw in the middle, adjustment screw in the middle, and turning this um, allows allows that switch to come on uh, come on earlier. I'm going to have to do it with engine running, so I apologise if it's a little bit noisy. So when I turn this screw out, because the boost pressure that's been provided by the turbo, even a tick of it, will turn the switch on. As you can see, with, with that resistance, that potentiometer, it causes the, the idle to be erratic. And this is what we've eliminated by using a boost switch. So I like to set it just so it just got a little bit, uh, a little bit of boost range to go before it switches off. Otherwise, when, when, you, when you're coming down revs, um, it, it tends to switch on the resistor. Um, which, and the potentiometer, which, uh, which causes a bit of a, uh, a stutter when you come into an old. So I like, I like to go about maybe a third to quarter of the... Uh, that's what I found out anyway. This here is made the adjustment knob for the potentiometer. So again, if I back the screw out on the switch, it comes on with the boost that's uh, been provided by the engine. What's that? Give me a third So, happy days really. It, it performs a lot better. It's, uh, it's It's got a lot more grunts um, and turns this boost switch on, which I reckon is around about 3 psi. Um, it switches resistor on and, and you can fair tell that it's got a lot more grunt. And again, this has been quite successful um, in, in terms of getting it to idle properly and you can ramp up the fuel in a little bit more than what you would do with, with, with every mod as, as standard. In future what I'm gonna be gonna be wanting to do is is add another boost switch and and have a have a uh, 1.5k potentiometer as well to uh, to adjust the initial gain so I can throw a bit more juice at turbo and get to spool up earlier and then I can control um, I can control mid range and top end fueling then we with the, with two different boost switches. So this line that goes to your boost switch, uh, this this basically comes off a uh, uh, wastegate actuator pipe, and that has just got a T piece put into it, and then it comes up this pipe and and blows into the back of this switch and turns it on. It's, it, I'm really happy with the way it performs, but d there's definitely uh, room for even more adjustment, um, especially if we use a different uh, another boost switch. Uh, to turn on another potentiometer with a bit lower value, higher up, higher up the boost range, I reckon we'll, we'll be able to uh, get a similar effect to Shimmick Governor Spring uh, in a manual pump.